In the middle of the country, nestled right here in the heart of Oklahoma, is a center for health, research, education, social services, and industry, built to rival the best in the world. A center that is fast becoming a modern mecca for discovery, innovation, and wellness. The Oklahoma Health Center. Walking around this fast-changing landscape of beautiful buildings and outdoor spaces, just a stone's throw from the Capitol, it's hard to picture what the center was 50 years ago. But turn back the hands of time and you'd find a large, sparsely developed plot of land. It was definitely not much to look at then. But where many saw problems, others saw opportunity. And a dream was born. The dream of a world-class health center for Oklahoma. The year was 1965. The Vietnam War waged on. So did the fight for civil rights and the nation was in the midst of a cultural revolution. Change was also on the minds of a handful of business and civic leaders in Oklahoma City. They understood that for our state to really flourish, for this community to really flourish, we had to have a great medical center within it. We had to have a place where people could get the best possible health care, not leave home, not leave the support groups that they have, not be far away from their families. Spearheading the effort were Stanton L. Young, Dean A. McGee, Dr. Don O'Donohue, E.K. Gaylord, and Harvey P. Everest. They set their sights on an area northeast of the downtown, home to the University of Oklahoma College of Medicine, then just a single building at the corner of Northeast 13th and Phillips. That was a medical school. End of discussion. <laughs> One building. The campus could barely be called that. There were very, very few other buildings, and it was pretty sparse out here. But that did not deter those early visionaries. They knew important seeds had already been planted. The Oklahoma Medical Research Foundation, one of the first independent research foundations in the nation, was in place, located next to the medical school. It was started decades earlier by physicians and scientists who knew research was essential to advance medical care. The original idea was, well, it should be an independent place where the research can happen, uh, and even people who might be teaching in the medical school or practicing medicine there then might spend part of their time doing research. Well, they would do that at the research foundation, a separate place. There were hospitals in place, too. One for veterans, another one for children, and an adult teaching hospital. But in the 60s, a lack of funding had impacted both the hospitals and the very existence of the medical school. I can remember uh, when I was still a student at the University of Oklahoma, uh, coming up here in about 1969 and wandering around for some reason and uh, being amazed that it looked so bad, frankly. With the support of those key business, civic, and government leaders, and with a new dean, Dr. James Dennis, in place, a plan to save the medical school was set in motion. Dean Dennis, who was the man with the, with the vision, uh, truly the visionary that founded them in the initial stage of the, of the Health Science Center, could articulate the vision and really did visualize what could happen here. The first thing he showed me when I interviewed with him was a big layout of what the campus was going to look like in the future. And um, if I look back now, um, a lot of that has really taken place. The formal plan for the Oklahoma Health Center had been out for a year, published in 1968 by the newly formed Oklahoma Health Center Foundation, an agency serving as an advocate for the campus organizations. Tireless hours were spent securing funding and support from the community and the legislature, as Dennis and fellow visionaries shared their idea for clustering more health organizations on a single campus with hospitals, governmental agencies, research facilities, and teaching entities, all sharing common ground, figuratively and literally. There was opposition to the plan, but leaders like Stanton Young proved they would not be swayed in their resolve. He was challenged on a point or two there, but he stood his ground, and uh, he normally always brought a good message back, uh, of the best one he could. And, uh, and everybody, for the most part, trusted Stan. The wheels of change began to turn, driven by the dedication and tenacity of a small group of individuals united in a mission to elevate medical education, care, and research in Oklahoma. 
And it was sheer determination. It's just, we, we are going to do this. And, and they did. And they got everyone else you, you get on board or get out of the way because we are going to do this, uh, whether, whether you're with us or not. The early 1970s brought new construction to the health center as Oklahoma voters overwhelmingly approved the Health and Education for a Better Oklahoma, or HERO bonds. Those state dollars were matched with federal funds, igniting growth. The new campus plan called for well-spaced buildings, attractive landscapes, and easy traffic circulation. Presbyterian Hospital relocated to the Oklahoma Health Center. More new buildings soon followed. The Oklahoma State Department of Health, the Oklahoma City Clinic, and a new eye institute spearheaded by oil man Dean A. McGee, who himself had undergone a vision-saving surgery. That concept had been discussed for a number of years, but because of his experience, because of his influence in the community, uh, Mr. McGee said, let's build an eye institute. McGee himself gave a million dollars, more than a third of the cost, and helped gain additional community support for the project. Just four years later, in December 1975, the, the original building uh, was dedicated in his name and uh, in his honor. By the mid-70s, funding had grown tight again. Some plans were derailed, others reworked, growth slowed, and there were other hurdles on the horizon. A second wave of construction took off at the health center at the start of the 80s, fueled by a new influx of funding. The newly renamed OU Health Sciences Center now was among only a few in the nation boasting seven health-related colleges. The Oklahoma Allergy and Asthma Clinic moved to the campus, as did the Sylvan H. Goldman Oklahoma Blood Institute. And Ronald McDonald House Charities of Oklahoma City opened its doors to seriously ill or injured children and their families. In the 80s, Children's Medical Research Institute, known today as Children's Hospital Foundation, was begun. Its goal? To raise funds to support children's health care in Oklahoma. But just three years into the new decade, the oil boom in Oklahoma went bust. Times got very tough. Uh, fun, the legislature wasn't really able to produce the kind of funding that was needed, and uh, the hospital system particularly began to have problems. Improvements at the health center slowed to a crawl as leaders did their best to stay the course. State dollars were tight, funding cuts rampant, programs and staffing took a hit, and the visionaries like Stanton Young again were there, as steadfast and committed as ever. You never give up, you just keep pressing, and uh, if you fail, you fail, but you've known you've done everything in your power to make it happen. In 1985, Presbyterian Hospital sold to Columbia HCA, and the Presbyterian Health Foundation was created to manage $64 million available after paying the hospital's debt. The foundation, working with the Urban Renewal Authority, began buying land which would allow for future expansion, and also made a commitment to advance research at the health center. For every dollar that was invest invested by the Presbyterian Health Foundation, we got between an eight and a ten dollar return in terms of grants that we brought in because of the investment of, of the Presbyterian Health Foundation. It was terrific. State government also began to provide incentives for private sector involvement in research. The Oklahoma Center for Advancement of Science and Technology, OCAST, was born. It operates at the nexus of invention, innovation, and entrepreneurship. In other words, to move medical research more quickly from the laboratory to the patient. And in the midst of an economic downturn that hit hard statewide, research funding at the health center increased significantly and quickly became the name of the game in the growth and development here.
the 90s marked the start of an important new institution of education at the Oklahoma Health Center, the Oklahoma School of Science and Mathematics. The idea was to establish a residential school to train some of Oklahoma's brightest high school students. The campus was built on 32 acres on the west side of Lincoln Boulevard, in close proximity to the research labs of OMRF and the OU Health Sciences Center. I think the location is critical, not just important, but critical to the success and continued success of the school and its students. At the start of the 90s, Dr. Edward Brandt had assumed the role of Dean of the College of Medicine. He worked with state leaders to advance a goal of combining research with patient care. The campus began planning for a new biomedical center. And the Presbyterian Health Foundation broke ground on its own 26-acre biomedical research park, a concept pushed forward by Stanton Young and other leaders of the foundation. Soon, the first building was underway. 110,000 square feet of state-of-the-art research and lab space. And then we just kept building. As they filled up one building, we'd build the next one and build the next one and build the next one. Research was on a roll. The OU Health Sciences Center built its own $26 million biomedical research center, and its research funding had increased by 250% by the mid-90s. OMRF's budget was approaching $30 million. New tenants moved into the Presbyterian Research Park as growth there continued. American Red Cross moved into its new regional headquarters building on campus. The Jimmy Everest Center for Children's Cancer and Blood Disorders opened, as did the Presbyterian Center for Healthy Living. And Children's Medical Research Institute expanded its role. And this story has to be about Dr. Stoll. When he came and, and he then added this vision to what was already going on inside the Children's Medical Research Institute, um, this notion of, of endowed chairs to, to recruit not just national but internationally you know, renowned scientists to Oklahoma City. In 1993, the teaching hospitals were moved from the Oklahoma Department of Human Services into a new state entity, the University Hospitals Authority. The health center overall was beginning to hit its stride. has been some kind of explosion in downtown Oklahoma City. Wow. Look at that shot. Holy it is cow. absolutely incredible. The third. side of the federal building has been blown off. Jesse. 1995 was marked by the Oklahoma City bombing, which tested the mettle of the growing health center community. It also showcased the center's strength and its importance to Oklahoma. The northern third of the building is gone. Uh, the mid-90s brought another crisis to Oklahoma, though, as federal funding for health care drastically changed. University and Children's Hospital quickly began building large deficits. It became pretty clear within the first few years that we were way underfunded. We didn't have the technology, the cutting edge um, equipment to maintain the accreditation necessary for those colleges and for those teaching programs. There was talk of closing both hospitals. A loss of the hospitals, though, also threatened the College of Medicine. Once again, adversity became the mother of invention, and a new idea had been born. A revolutionary idea at the time, something that had never been done before. The idea was to create a public and a private partnership. A new entity, the University Hospitals Trust, would hold the assets of the state. Columbia HCA would operate university and children's hospitals under a lease that provided $50 million to the trust up front and a portion of hospital revenues yearly. Leveraging those dollars with state and federal funds, the trust has since invested more than a billion dollars to advance medical research, education, and patient care in Oklahoma. Once the University Hospitals Trust was, was formed and became a real partner with the College of Medicine, we had some funds, not only to build buildings, but to develop new programs. The new millennium brought the dawn of a new age at the Oklahoma Health Center, a renaissance of sorts that changed the physical landscape, forged important new partnerships statewide, and attracted more of the best and brightest physicians, health professionals, educators, and scientists to Oklahoma. 
At the start of the new century, campus leaders set their sights on building a world-class cancer center for Oklahoma. A massive fundraising campaign was launched. And Oklahomans again showed their support at the polls, voting to tap tobacco taxes to help fund construction. University, Children's, and Presbyterian hospitals were united under one name, the OU Medical Center. And soon, the health center was in the midst of a new building boom. Exciting. It's about the best word I can use. And we'd look out our windows, and I remember doing that and watching all the development around us. And that's an exciting thing to happen. The Oklahoma Blood Institute built a new state-of-the-art donor center. Easter Seals, Oklahoma, opened its new adult daycare and child development center. And the University Hospitals Trust invested in new and upgraded facilities all across the campus. So we began with a uh, outpatient adult facility. We did that in the early 2000s. Next, an old research building was demolished, making way for a new children's complex. It featured an outpatient facility for OU children's physicians. The children's atrium was added next. This beautiful architectural gem serves as the new front door to both the clinics and the children's hospital. And it's our goal to be the leaders in healthcare, to provide for your children, the children of the future, all that they need here in this one facility. The project also brought a much needed state-of-the-art meeting and conference center for the campus, the Samus Education Center. But I also felt a great sense of honor to have my family's name on such an important building on this campus. Facilities enhancement took center stage at the hospitals too, as old facilities received modern upgrades. The OU College of Allied Health opened its new building, another architectural beauty. And the College of Dentistry welcomed students and patients to a newly enhanced facility. Treasures for Tomorrow became a showcase event for the campus, created by the Oklahoma Health Center Foundation and spearheaded by civic leader Sue Ann Hyde. It has honored more than 83 remarkable Oklahomans whose passion for life, courage, values, and commitment to community serve as role models to others. The event has also raised more than $3 million for parks, landscaping, and iconic artwork on campus. As expanses of concrete vanished, new green spaces took form, welcoming students, staff, and patients. The Dean McGee Eye Institute completed a $30 million expansion, bringing with it 100 new employees, including physicians and scientists. I come fairly often, and I'm, I'm just stunned that what's been created. It's just an amazing accomplishment. Uh, physically, uh, it's, there's no way that any of us could have envisioned this. The State Health Department continues to benefit from its location at the Oklahoma Health Center. Makes partnerships easy uh, with the many activities that are taking place throughout the campus, whether it's research or working with labs or working with physicians or working around prevention programs. In the past decade and a half, research funding has also grown at a record pace, and with it, the need for still more research space. One, two, three. A new $38 million expansion of the Stanton L. Young Biomedical Research Center was completed, driving yet another influx of researchers and research dollars. Laboratories quickly filled as teams set to work, seeking new treatments, new ways to prevent disease, and new cures. The Oklahoma Medical Research Foundation doubled in size with its newly constructed research tower, providing opportunities for still more discovery and more collaboration. Over the past 15 years, the research park, now known as the OU Research Park, has added and filled building after building, attracting top tenants. The idea is to incubate and grow those companies here and hopefully provide them the resources and the and the help to, to get through the difficult stages of starting and then when they, when they do grow and when they become economically viable, they stay here. Many companies in the park are indeed writing their own Oklahoma-based success stories. We've averaged double-digit growth since the beginning and so it's a continual growth process. OCAST has maintained its efforts investing heavily in medical research with massive dividends for the state. So in 28 years, the state has invested through us $260 million with a return of $5.3 billion. 
So the return on investment is 20 to 1. This remarkable 325-acre campus is now home to an ever-expanding array of medical-related organizations. It is a melting pot of biotech companies, government, education, patient care, and numerous support organizations. And the second largest concentration of employees in all of Oklahoma, also drawing an ever-growing array of businesses to the area. At one time, you couldn't find a developer who would come in and invest his money, but it's happening now. It's right before our eyes. A new hotel is opened near the Cancer Center. And with 18,000 people on campus, banks and other companies are finding it's good business to locate here. And this place is, you know, really, really booming, and we want to be a part of it. Construction also is now underway on the western edge of the health center as General Electric constructs its new Global Research Oil and Gas Technology Center. They want it to be close to uh, scientists, other scientists, close to where science is, is growing and developing or building infrastructure, scientific capacity. Clearly, the Oklahoma Health Center has become a magnet for science, research, and medical care. It is a hotbed of activity, a nearly $3 billion a year economic engine for the state. This is a very highly educated concentration of individuals, so they have an impact on Oklahoma City and this state more than just the payroll and capital investment. I mean, they add a dimension to the community, uh, probably patrons of the arts, probably big supporters of it. Uh, they tend to be socially involved and socially engaged in a lot of different activities. The Oklahoma Health Center's success is not measured in dollars alone, it's also measured in live change for the better. So yes, there's a financial positive for us and for the community, but there's the bigger mission that the Health Center was founded on, which is to relieve suffering of people. No longer do Oklahomans need to travel long distances to receive cutting edge care. The campus is home to the state's only level one trauma center, where specialists daily save lives when seconds count. To a Heart Rhythm Institute of international renown, and to top-ranked programs in many medical specialties. With a children's hospital second to none, Oklahoma children receive the best possible care for diseases both common and rare without leaving the state. More than 200,000 patient visits a year. When you need it, you know, thank goodness it's here. The Harold Ham Diabetes Center is breaking new ground and forging new partnerships in diabetes prevention, research, and care. The Stevenson Cancer Center opened just a few years ago. Today, patients from every county in Oklahoma are finding first-class cancer care in a healing atmosphere close to home. And cancer research continues to expand here furthering knowledge and bringing patients access to new treatments and new clinical trials. Day in and day out, people come to work and ask the big questions. How can we improve patient care? How can we improve the health of our state? Innovative educational programs now unite students across the healthcare professions in interprofessional training that more closely mirrors the environments in which they will someday work. From students to physicians to researchers, recruitment all across the health center is benefited too. Today, Oklahoma is providing career options for young professionals who in the past may have looked elsewhere. In fact, for many researchers and clinicians, it has become a destination of choice. Uh, they are tremendously impressed, not only with what we have here in terms of our facilities, but also the community. The downtown renaissance, the beautiful Devon Tower, uh, the construction boom that's going on downtown, the housing options available, the entertainment available, the Oklahoma City Thunder. The sounds of construction reverberate once more on campus. A new academic building will soon be home to the OU College of Medicine. Additional parking is planned, and the Stevenson Cancer Center is already looking toward its next phase of development, years sooner than anticipated but it shows what we can do in Oklahoma and that we can be a role model and we can set an example for the rest of the country. Stand here in the middle of the Oklahoma Health Center. Look at any direction, north, south, east, west. There are beautiful new vistas. It might be tempting to think the Oklahoma Health Center has arrived, 
but think again. When we have that great success, it makes some people, you will start thinking, well, we have arrived and we don't have to do any more. This is not that type of place. You have to continue building, continue striving for the next big thing. We have to have this center. It has to be here. 50 years ago, a small group of visionaries lit the torch. They kept it burning in good times and in bad, and now have passed it to a new generation of leaders. It takes guts. It takes uh, willingness to take risks, to make gambles, to go beyond where everybody says you can go. I think those visionaries, and they were visionaries, if they could all be here today and look and see what's here, I think they'd be astounded. I think they'd be very pleased with their legacy and what those they entrusted with carrying out their vision have been able to accomplish. There is an old proverb, good fortune favors the bold and abandons the timid. The future is to be created. Boldness has genius, power, and magic in it.